Hi guys, this is Brandon with Fold Up Games. How in the world are you doing today? I am great, thanks. So, let's do this. This is a topic I've been wanting to do for a really long time, and I've been putting it off because, frankly, it kind of intimidated me. Uh, I think that going from drag and drop to the GML, Game Maker Language Coding, is very important. Uh, and it's something that's just hard. How do you even get started? Uh, I think that there's no way I can do justice to the topic. You could spend years uh, learning how to do this. In fact, I've been doing this for years, learning how to do it. So you're not going to do this overnight. So I just want to give you some pointers on where in the world do you start. This is for people who've been doing drag and drop and they want to know, you know, how do I even get into it? People are always giving me bits of code. I don't even know what to do with it. So let's go ahead and see if I can help you guys, uh, you know, just crack, crack that uh, open. Dip your toe in the water. One thing that I think is important to remember getting into it is that the drag and drop blocks don't dead on exactly translate over to code. The way they write code is different. Uh, obviously, you're dealing with graphics versus actually you know computer code. So there's going to be some changes there, but they're not going to use uh, some of the same words are, are going to be a little different. Uh, you know, you just have to get used to that. There are some ways to translate between them, uh, and we'll get into that in a minute. It's important to realize that the d d code is really the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the iceberg is what we're looking at, which is why I, I said I was a little intimidated to even try to tackle this subject because there's just so much. It's, it's hard to know where in the world do you even start, uh, but it's totally worth getting into. There are a lot of benefits to it as well. Why bother? People are going to be able to help you more easily when you know how to do code. You'll actually understand what it is they said <laughs> when they do help you. Uh, in the end, it will become a lot faster for you than drag and drop. The code is a lot more flexible and faster, and Google searches are going to be a lot easier. Uh, also, you know, it's just a great way to get into other coding languages, I think. If you want to learn some other software packages aside from GameMaker, you're going to have to get beyond what I'd call the training wheels, uh, rip that Band-Aid off and, and get into the code. So the big differences that I think you'll find, in addition to you know the language being a little bit different, is that the code is instant, right there at your fingertips. You don't have to rummage through tabs. You can just you know literally start typing anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do the same exact thing, but some of them might be more efficient for your particular situation uh, and just work better for that uh, that way. Instead of having just one tool, you have you know a hundred. Uh, there are also a lot more intricate ways to do things. Collisions, for example, are one of my favorite, you know, just go-to examples. Collision point, collision rectangle, collision circle. You know, if place meeting over here, over there, if there's an intersection between a line, uh, you know, like a line of sight, it's you can't do that stuff <laughs> so easily in, in, the, uh, in the drag and drop. You've got to get into code to get all the rest of these awesome tools, the rest of that iceberg. So this is... Uh, again, just a general overview. Uh, I'm not going to be able to hit everything, but I am going to try to help you get started. First of all, there is a resource that I'll put at the end of it that will give you that translation of going from those icons into the, the uh, drag and drop, from drag and drop into the code. Uh, Google, use Google. Google the, the term GML. It means Game Maker Language, so use that term GML. Uh, when you do your Google searches. And don't forget to ask the Game Maker community. I'm on there. I haven't been as active lately uh, as I have in times past, but that may change. And the community will also try to help. Once you start learning the code, they'll, they're going to be able to help you a lot more easily. All right. <clears throat> this is the literal place to start. <laughs> when you go to the Control tab, find that little block down there that looks like a little piece of paper and uh, go ahead and grab that guy. You can drop it anywhere in your, in your uh, program, in your object, at the create event, on the step event, at the end event, anywhere. Uh, and you can do more than one. The most common place is in the step event. So if you don't know where to put it, probably the step event, it just runs. If then. If then is a basic coding concept. It's the core notion of any bit of code. And you probably already understand this anyway from the Gmail drag and drop, but let's go ahead and cover it anyway, just so you know, and we're all on the same page. This is the way you write code. You're gonna write the word if place underscore meeting. A lot of code is written like that, by the way, just they don't write it in one big word and they separate out the words with underscore. So that's just how it's done. Place meeting, and then in parenthesis, it'll say something such as X, Y, you know, and then you write in whatever it is, the object, then, do the next thing. So this is the if the condition is met, then do the next thing. This is the way you're, you're going to write code, but you don't usually, you don't actually have to write the word then. It understands that the next thing coming up is then. That's why I put it in 
kind of a grayed out. It was funny, I was just waving my hand at the screen and pointing to it, but you can't see that. Uh, <laughs> if place meaning you know, this, then do the next thing. That's the way code is, code is uh, going to work for you. All right, this is a big, big, big deal. Game Maker is trying to help. Look how friendly it is over there. See, it says, I'm trying to help. Go ahead and, let me get my mouse on screen. Go ahead and activate when you, when you open up that piece of code, double click on it, and then activate those two guys up in the middle. They're gonna do code checking and code completion help. And if there's a problem with your code, it'll try to alert you to it. It really is trying to help you. It says at the bottom, unexpected end of code reached. Uh, that means we haven't filled it out yet. And here it's got code completion help. It says if place underscore what. Look at that. Place empty, place free, place meeting, place snapped. And it needs the rest of it. Even tells you a little tip there. It says place empty XY, place free XY, place meeting XY obj. It's trying to help you fill out the rest of the code. So it really is trying to help you uh, if you pay attention to what it's saying. So do look at that carefully, but you're going to need to activate those two little guys at the top to get that help. So what does that code completion mean? What does any block of code really mean? Uh, it's trying to tell you what you have to still fill out. And this is just an example. Uh, if place meeting x, y, opt. If what is happening, in this case, the code that you're writing would be place meeting. A collision event is really what it is. Where, x, y, and then the object. Place meeting what? You know, with who am I colliding? So if you have this on a character, it says if place meeting x, y, where? Well, my x, y, you could just leave it that. With what, with who? It would be with, you know, object ground, if place meaning I hit the ground, or with a bullet or whatever. Uh, and that's what that code really means. Any code is written essentially like that. It starts out with that if, that's why I bolded it, if something, and then it fills out the conditions. When you have those bits of code completion help on there, they're going to try to help you fill out the rest of it. So go ahead and pay attention to that, and you'll see exactly what you have to do to fill it out. All right, baby steps. If you want to get started and just try something easy, try swapping out your variables. When you've got a block, that var block, when you double click on it and it says, you know, it, that, that variable ammo value of 10, all you have to do is drop in a block of code and literally write whatever it is you wanted. See how easy that is? Ammo equals 10. Isn't that easy? Uh, if you wanted to if you wanted to make it increase or decrease, by the way, this is a bonus tip, it would be minus equals 10, plus equals 10. Um, that's why that relative block is there in the set variable, set variable relative 10. That's why it's increase or decrease. In code, you would just write it ammo plus equals 10. Okay, so easy. So much easier to write ammo plus equals 10 than double click the variable, write ammo, write 10, click relative. So that's why I said coding can become a lot faster, but swap out your variables and then run your game. And you'll see that nothing is broken and it still runs. I think that'll be a big shot in the arm for you. The other thing I suggest is to literally just start typing stuff and see what happens. Uh, because if you've got that code completion on, look at all that. You write place or even pull PL and it's going to pop up all this information and say, oh, what do you mean? I, I learned so much stuff just doing that. Honest to goodness, I've taught myself all the stuff I know uh, and done Google and watched videos and done all the rest. But just typing stuff, I find things. And you can too. All right, general pointers. Here's some general ideas uh, that'll kind of get you moving ahead more quickly, I hope. Squiggle brackets. Squiggle brackets are the same as those little arrow, blo uh, arrow blocks that separate out code. The squiggle bracket, you see the top, bottom, open, close squiggle bracket. It's going to run that as one block, and then after it, run the next block. You could put entire bits of nested code inside each other with those squiggle brackets. In fact, if you have a dependency like, you know, if ammo is greater than 10, then squiggle bracket out a whole other block of code that will only run when that condition has been met. So squiggle brackets are really terrific, and that's how you, you're going to see most all of your code is written in squiggle brackets. And always tab them out, by the way. Tab out each little nested part of it a little deeper. It makes it so much easier to troubleshoot your code later. All right. Uh, remember earlier when we saw that on that uh, the variable block, it says relative, and you've probably seen that a lot, relative. Is, it, is this variable related to me or somebody else? The secret is the dot. See there on the left, it says if ammo equals 10, then make a bullet. Versus if object player dot ammo. That means that that variable is related to the player. Object player dot ammo. Obviously, the player would need to have that variable called ammo uh, on him somewhere or, or you're going to get an error. But 
that's when you have those blocks that say relative or not, whether it's whether it's about you or it's about somebody else. Uh, you know, up at the up at the top, you've got that do, 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 applies to myself or the other. That's what I meant. Sorry, I said relative. Uh, applies to myself or it applies to some other object. That's what that dot means. If it's applied to yourself, you literally just write it. Ammo equals ten. That means this is my code versus you can write somebody else's code. Object player dot ammo. So the players dot ammo. So that's a really terrific way to quickly get in there and understand, uh, you know, how to impact another object that's not you, and you don't have to go hunting for it. You just type it. Type it really quickly. All right, nested code. <laughs> Take a minute. Take a minute. Breathe it in. Let it settle. Nested code is why. <laughs> nested code is why things look crazy. Okay, as if the squiggle brackets weren't crazy enough. When you get all this nested, it starts looking really crazy. When you start writing it, it's not that bad. Say it with me. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. We have some code in there that you're going to understand. Move towards point x y speed. Okay. Move towards what point? We're going to fill that out with again with a dot with to the object players dot x the object player dot y at a speed of 10 okay simple code x y speed where are we moving object players dot x object players dot y at a speed of 10 well let's go ahead and swap out that speed of 10 with some other code in this case we're going to move at however far away we are and that's going to be another block of code distance to object which object object player when you take that whole block whoop, take that whole block right there I'm gonna let me see if I can draw it on the screen. Yeah. When you take this entire block right here, distance to object, object player, and then you're going to substitute it in for speed, right? Then you get this crazy code right here, and it's got a double parenthesis at the end because you're dropping that entire block of code in place of 10, but you're still keeping that parenthesis that's there. So you've, you've got what looks like these crazy parentheses. And you can keep going like that. You can keep nesting more and more code, and it starts looking pretty weird. Uh, but when you understand those fundamental blocks, those individual components, and realize that you're literally just taking this, this whole block here, and we're just plugging it into where we want it to go, even though it looks crazy on screen, it'll make a lot of sense, and it, it'll probably work. Uh, so don't be intimidated when you see big, long, hairy bits of code. Break them down. Again, remember back where we were in the first place. Understand the fundamental concept of what that code actually means. When you get in here and start writing something nutty, you know, object player dot x, object player dot y, remember, it's still x, y. The x, y position on screen. Not complicated. You can do it. Just take it one step at a time. All right, another tip for you. Code comments. Code comments are super, super useful. When you drop them into GameMaker, they turn green. Uh, GameMaker, by the way, is color coding everything uh, for you as you go along, so that's also helpful if you uh, pay attention to the colors. When we do a triple slash at the beginning, we can actually name the entire block, that whole paper page. When you go ahead and OK it, you'll see that it has whatever name you gave it. That's with this triple slash up here. I've got the marker, and now I, now I want to keep using it. <laughs> The next part is a single slash. You could put that anywhere you want to in your code to leave yourself a note. I do that all the time, like this is about sprites, this is about speed, kind of a thing. Uh, another way you can do is to comment out, is what they call it. Comment out a whole block. You do a slash asterisk, and it starts ignoring everything you type until you go asterisk slash to uh, go back to paying attention again. All right, last tip. Last super tip for you. When you do start using these different blocks of code, I would say use a separate little block of code for each concept, okay? You might have a block in there that's just for sprites and you write a triple slash at the beginning, go slash, 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 sprites. And that whole block is only related to sprites. When you go to try to troubleshoot your program later on, you'll be able to find that block and know, you know, hey, if I'm having a sprite problem, all of my sprite activities are right there in that one little block. Another great thing about uh, code blocks instead of drag and drop, you can do that. You can have, say, a section for move speeds or for inventory or for variables or anything that makes sense to your game. Just keep it in a sensible block all by itself. Uh, all by itself. I've got blocks that are usually for m speed and movement and interaction like that and another block that is for sprites. So it's very typical that I will write that way. All right, last question. Is there a guide? Yes, as I told you on up there, this is the long link to it. 
Pacthub.size template. It's not the only one out there. You can you can also Google GML to D uh, uh, D to GML uh, reference. I will put a link to this in the description anyway. Uh, but if you do have to type this in, heaven help you. Uh, there it is on screen. All right, guys. I hope you appreciate uh, that this this has been a, a big challenge for me to do. Uh, if I miss something, please don't just give it a thumbs down. At least tell me what I did wrong. Uh, and if you have any other tips to share with people, then go ahead and drop them there. If I've been helpful to you, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. I'm not trying to monetize my videos. Uh, you'll just uh, you know stroke my ego a little, make me feel better about myself, uh, and that I'll keep on doing these videos for me. Uh, for you with a little thumbs up. <laughs> That's all. You guys have a great day. Visit us at foldupgames.com. See ya.